I've been trying to find the best way for years to cool my house down with solar and only solar. And using my small setup, I think I have the perfect solution in this box. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up and I'm gonna show y'all what this is. Oh, check it out guys. So here we have a 9,000 BTU mini split AC system. So this I got on Amazon. This thing seemed to have pretty good reviews. It came with the indoor unit, the outdoor unit, as well as an install kit. So that has your copper lines and some other little doodads. Anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and get this thing kind of unboxed. That's it, we're just gonna try to my best to install this. I've never installed one of these. This is not a DIY kit because you're supposed to have a professional do it, but I do have a vacuum pump. I do have a manifold gauge set and I know a tiny bit about HVAC. So we're gonna kind of mix all that together and hopefully I can make this work. No guarantees. I have no idea what I'm doing, but we're gonna learn as we go and hopefully we get a functioning product when we're done. So anyways, this thing is about 650 bucks on Amazon. Pretty good deal. It runs on 115 volts, which is important because my inverter is only 115 or 120 volts. 1000 BTU, so it shouldn't take an, a really a ton of power to run. It also is a heat pump, so that's cool. You can use it to heat your house in the winter. But my goal with this, I'm gonna try to run this off only solar as much as possible in order to keep my central home AC unit from running as little as possible to try to save money. And that's how I'm gonna integrate my hobby size solar power system into actually saving me money on my heating and cooling for a while i've used an ac unit that i just stuck in the window and that's worked fine but this is going to be hard installed into the house i just got to put a little hole in the wall so that's going to be kind of weird but we'll do all that and that's it now i'm able to just literally hook this up and it'll be ready to go so anyways i'm going to get all this stuff unboxed lay it all out and figure out a game plan on how to install it okay so we got the indoor unit the wiring to go from the indoor unit to the outdoor unit the mounting plate some kind of insulation stuff to wrap the hoses around, uh, mounting plate obviously. It looks like it came with a spare set of flare fittings, but the hoses already have the fittings on them. So there's your line set right there. Remote, drain adapter, some hardware. And there's the outdoor unit itself. It's really small, so that's cool. I didn't want like a massive setup. Like I said, this is just, this is just gonna be used for solar, so I don't need a massive unit. The lower, the smaller the better, less energy consumption, all that good stuff. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get all this stuff kind of, I guess I'm gonna start by mounting the thing on the wall right there so i need to take some measurements i thought it was going to come with like a paper template that you could use to draw everything but it didn't so i'm gonna have to do a lot of measuring and double checking and then that's it so i guess first i'm gonna go find a stud finder so i can mark the studs in the wall start mounting the plate get the hole drilled and kind of go from there i guess every step i do i'll show you guys how i did it and if i have any issues you will see i guess if i have any issues you guys will all see it all right i got the most nerve-wracking part done so the bracket's mounted, I got the hole drilled as best of my ability. I have no idea if it's in the right spot yet. I drilled it a two and three eighths inch hole and I'm gonna try to put this two inch piece of schedule 40 in there to make a sleeve. I read that on the internet that somebody did that and I think it's a good idea. So I just gotta go out and drill the outside hole, get this piece of pipe cut to length and then we can go ahead and get the indoor, mount, indoor unit mounted. On this particular unit, I couldn't find any instructions but the wiring hookup is right here. And then you have this black wire with four con uh, four connectors on it going to the outdoor unit so just make sure you pay attention to how you hook it up and hook the outdoor unit up the same because that's what gives power to this all right so now we're on the other side of the unit i do still need to tape up the lines you definitely want to insulate these because the cold side will sweat or actually this will sweat too whenever it's in heat pump mode and you'll create condensation in the wall so make sure these are really well white uh, make sure these are really well wrapped up to keep air and condensation from being a problem so just kind of keep that in mind. I have no idea how I'm going to do it yet. It did come with some weird tape. So I might just wrap all this really tightly and neatly and shove it through the wall. All right. So there's the uh, sleeved hole going to the outside. So that came out really good. I also filed the edges smooth. That way they're not so rough. And that's it. The indoor unit should fit. Should is the big keyword if everything's measured right. So hopefully I'm just going to hang it up there, shovel the pipes outside, put a little bit more insulation tape around everything. That should be pretty much the complete install for in here. If you're going to do this yourself, make sure you really pay attention to what you're doing because you don't want to put a hole in your house and it doesn't work. And then you just have a hole in your house. Okay, here's the outside hole. It does protrude a little bit, so I'll probably go back here and trim this or just leave it to put a lot of sealant to make sure we don't have any gaps. And then this is all going to have to be sealed, obviously, once the line set comes out. I'm also going to smooth out all that, and that's it. So I need to probably start setting up to get the ground station put. Hey, guys, future Mike here. So this is I'm just kind of throwing this into the video, even though the unit's completely done. I'm gonna show you how to vacuum it down because it was a little bit confusing to me and I just wanna make it easy for you guys. So all I used was a Harbor Freight vacuum pump and a Harbor Freight R134 gauge set. Now this unit is R410A, 
but we're only using the low side gauge for the vacuum part of it to vacuum the system down. And Okay, I'm just showing you guys real quick. So from the vacuum pump, we use the yellow line to go to the center gauge on the manifold. Then you connect the low pressure line. All the valves are still closed. And this is gonna go to this adapter fitting. You need to buy this adapter fitting because this will not directly screw onto the service port right here. Luckily, these are really cheap. I think I paid a few bucks on Amazon for that fitting. So basically you take this cap off, you go ahead and screw this on. At this time, you will have the line set connected, but you will not have opened the valves for the refrigerant. And when you connect this, you'll basically be evacuating the hoses as well as the evaporator in the house. So essentially all you do is you connect that on, open this valve, turn the vacuum pump on, and let it vacuum down for 15 minutes. Then you're gonna close this, turn the vacuum pump off, and you're gonna watch your vacuum gauge. And as long as it doesn't move, I believe it said within five minutes, then you should be good. Another step, if you have the means to do it, is nitrogen pressure test. I did not nitrogen pressure test this. However, if you have the means to do that, or if you have a professional HVAC guy do it, he'll more than likely do that. And that's a good way to check for leaks as well, because once a vacuum test will show more or less if it leaks, but I think the nitrogen is also a little bit more accurate. And another reason you want to vacuum is to get any sort of moisture out of the line set, out of the evaporator. You know, you don't want any of those contaminations in your system. That way the system runs good. It doesn't have any contamination. You don't have to wear all water, none of that stuff. So it's very important that you vacuum it down. Don't just go ahead and open these. That's what makes this kind of a non-DIY because you have to do that. There are some units, like I believe the Mr. Cool units, that have pre-vacuated lines and they have some sort of connectors that keep everything sealed when you hook it up. So, but those systems are about double what this costs. So if you want to go the cheaper route, just realize you do have to do a little bit more a little bit more research and a little bit more learning or just pay an HVAC guy to do it. I'm sure he wouldn't charge you a crap ton to come do it, but I don't know. So anyways, I just wanted to show you all that's how you hook it all up. And then once you're done, there's a straighter valve in here. You can pull this off and it'll hold the vacuum just fine. Put your cap on. Then you pull these two caps and you slowly undo the little Allen wrench holes inside there. And what I did is I kind of did it for like a couple seconds just to get some pressure in the system. Then I closed it, checked for leaks on the top and at the, at the top, I'm sorry, at the bottom. I'm gonna add check for leaks here. And I checked leaks at the connections up there. And once I felt confident that there was no leaks, I went ahead and opened them all the way up, put these service caps back on. And that's it. I spent another 20 minutes just really soaping down the connectors real good to make sure there's no leaks. I didn't have any leaks. So that's it. Very important step. I just wanted to kind of add this into the video. So that's it. All right, guys. So it's the next day. I actually got the mini split all pretty much buttoned up and done. Got the line set hooked up. I did perform a vacuum down and did my best to make sure everything did it. I also threw some soapy water on the connections on here and up there to make sure that nothing's leaking. And so far we look good, no leaks. And I did a little test on this unit and man, it's so quiet. I will definitely show you guys. But before we do that, I do need to insulate this hole. I need to clean the line set up and attach all this and make it look all neat. Cause right now I kind of, we're just gonna go ahead and clean all that up. We got to put the surface cover on the line set, secure this better, mount this to the deck because it's just sitting there for right now. And that's it. So this is little, this little mini split is pretty much all done and so far I'm really impressed. So sorry, I kind of glazed over all the outside steps. It was really hot yesterday. I was getting kind of frustrated. I didn't know if this was going to work and I was kind of doubting myself for a minute, but after I got it all installed, it's freaking awesome. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and get all this buttoned up. I'll show you guys once I'm done, then we'll do a test run. I did just for right now install a 12 gauge lead to power it. You're supposed to install a disconnect, so if you're gonna do it at home, make sure you do it all correctly. Also, this pretty big DIY project, I would recommend if you don't know what you're doing to get an HVAC guy to install it for you. But if you're, you know, if you can kind of somewhat figure it out, it's not impossible to do on your own. So there are certain steps you definitely gotta follow. Definitely suck it down, definitely pressure test it. That way you don't leak all your refrigerant out and that's it. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and get it all buttoned up. Yeah, you can see I put a, an old water hose for the drain line. My biggest fear was making sure the drain line worked. That way it wouldn't drip in the house and it looked like it's working. So, and you can see the little sleeve we did up there. So I bought some expanding foam to put in the hole and some line set covers. I'm gonna cover the line set as good as possible to make sure we don't have any issues with sweating. And that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all that done, get all this cleaned up and I'll show you guys once I'm done and we'll get it running. All right guys, so here's the final installation. I still have to tidy up the lines a little bit, but I got it all sealed up. I got it all foam taped up. I put some foam tape on the end of the lines right here just to keep the line set from sweating. I still got to tuck the cables a little bit, uh, tie up the drain line, which I use an old water hose. So that's kind of funny just to kind of get the condensate way out of here. And that's it. So it kind of looks kind of weird depending on who you ask, but maybe eventually I'll build a cover to go over that. But this is good just for now. Like I said, this is my first time ever installing a mini split and I was very happy with it. I, I was really doubting myself kind of about halfway through. I was like, man, I don't know if I can do this, but 
hey, it all worked out. So like I said, I just got to tidy up the line set and I'm going to show you guys how much power this thing's actually using. And right now it's about 100 degrees outside here in Texas. It's extremely humid. Actually, I got the other window unit running over there too. So that's it. I'm going to go inside and show you guys how much power we're using. All right, I have the unit on as low as I can get it to go. And yeah, she's ice cold, so. And then what you do is when you set your temperature, it actually displays it up there, so that's pretty cool. Basically, I have the unit with the fan as low as it'll go. And I've seen the wattage drop as low as 500, but typically in low fan speed setting, it'll run between five to 700 watts, I've noticed. And a lot of it also might be what temperature you have it set. So I think if you set this thing higher, it'll run a little, it'll run a little easier. And then if you set the temp really low, it's going to run the compressor and the outdoor unit a little bit faster just to keep the air temperature as cold as possible. I just discovered a new feature on this. It's called silent mode. So I went ahead and pressed that and it seems like it put the fan even lower than I already had it set. And look at the wattage. So pretty cool. That's pretty much what I would call the lowest power mode. I guess you could say it'll cool the least, but it's also very quiet and also use the least amount of electricity. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so I have the mini split turned up to its highest cooling mode I can get it to, which means it's gonna produce the most amount of cold. I have the temp set really low. As you can see, I have it to 62. And yes, yeah, so we're using about uh, almost 1100 watts. Full power, so not too bad. Keep that in mind if you wanna power this with something. The only bad thing about my setup being 12 volts is uh, that many watts at 12 volts is like 90 amps on the DC side. So that's one of the reasons I do want to go to a 48 volt system in the future. So we're going to do that probably in the near future. We're going to do a full brand new setup. But just for right now, this does work just fine. The inverter can handle it absolutely no problem. There you go. That's kind of the power requirements you can kind of see out of this unit. I have seen some. I read on the internet some. It's going to vary depending on what unit you have. But like I said, this specific one. You can kind of see this is at full power and then obviously at low power is around 500. All right, guys, this, this is going to officially wrap up the OLMO Amazon mini split. So the install went pretty smoothly. It wasn't too bad. I don't know how I feel about this whole set. I mean, I'm sure some people are going to look at that and think it's really ugly. However, I was just, I wanted to get the line set away from the house just in case I had any problems. I think my next go around, I definitely learned a lot and I will do things a little bit differently. However, I'm very happy with the setup as it sits. It'll be very easy to service if I have any issues and that's it. I mean, you can hear it running right now. It's literally on full cool, super quiet. So I guess that's going to be it. Hopefully you got something out of this video. If you guys have any questions on this install or anything else AC related or solar related, drop a comment. I do my best to respond to everybody's comments and I'll do my best to help you out if you're having trouble with your setup or if you just want to chat or you have general questions, just let me know. So thank you guys very much.